Good morning from Donegal, Ireland, folks. I'm just going to make a short video explaining how to connect two different websites on two different domains using Fluent CRM. Just bear in mind, this question's coming up a lot in the group. It should only take a couple of minutes to explain. Just bear in mind that you do need the pro version of Fluent CRM plugin and the pro version of Fluent Forms to get this to work. So I'm sending information from a website called, a food blog called Earth to Spoon, and that's going to be sending data from this subscribe form over to our other site on a different domain called Funnel and Click. So what we need to do first is to set up the webhook on the receiving site called Funnel and Click. So we go to settings, and we go over to Incoming and Webhooks and we need to create a new one. And I'm going to call it after the name of the site it's coming from. And this is where we select the list that the incoming data goes to. So I've already named the list Art to Spoon subscribers and the tag will be by the same name. So um, it should be down at the bottom yet. Yeah, just scroll down there. Status would be depending on how you have it set up with the double opt in. Sure, will just go to pending or subscribed. But it's just I just want to. I'm not going to go too deep into things like that. I just want to show this. It's not actually that complicated. The hard part is actually working it out at the start. But once you understand it, it's actually quite easy to. Um, get going. <clears throat> Something that I did notice, maybe it's just on my own system on this old laptop with a small screen, but the URL there doesn't appear, you know, but what we need to do is just go update like that and then the URL that we need to put on the other site appears here. So there seems to be a little glitch there, but it is working folks and it works really well. I've been learning this um over the past week experimenting with it. So we can see by the little check mark there that I have successfully copied that big long URL into my clipboard and I'm going to paste it now and going over to the other site called Earth Spoon. We need to go into Fluent Forms Pro and we need to go to all forms. Remember, you need the pro version for this to work of the Fluent Forms plugin. This feature is not in the free version. So we want to go into, I have a newsletter form here and just for our own clarity, I like to have very specific names on these if I ever because you're going to go back and look at it in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or maybe someone else will be looking at it. So I like to give things very specific names for that reason so that we'll understand it when we come back to it. So we'll just call this sending data to funnel and click. So there's a form, subscribe form. The, just the heading is there, first name, last name, and the email. And I didn't bother putting in the GDPR consent there, but you can do that. What we want to do is go over to settings and integrations, and then go down to the webhook here. And that's where we need to give it a name, sending to funnel and click the request URL, this is where the webhook goes now. So you can understand that we're given the other site, the, the sending site, the information that it needs, where the data is going. It's important now to set that as post. And I've been using the JSON format. I'm not sure actually what the difference is between them, but I think in the docs it says to use JSON, but it, it works anyway. And I haven't actually gone into this very much. I just wanted to get the basic form working. So there we go. That form is set up now. I need to go back to the editor. I need to copy the short code for this. Um, that's there, that short code. Okay. So I need to actually, I need to actually just check the fields here. Oh yeah. That's the thing that I forgot to mention. Um, the fields. Okay. So, this is important. 
we have the name prefix, first name, last name, and full name. Now, this is where the webhook is set up on funnel and click. So, because this is the tricky part, these keys, um, these keys have to have the same names. These keys here, okay, they have to have the same names as the keys on the sending site. Otherwise, it won't work. But we have them there: first name, last name, and email. So. We can actually, I think it's down under, oh sugar, I can't really see it there, but under advanced, you can see that the name attribute is called email there. So, and it should be over here as well. Um, email, yeah, you can see email is the same name. So what I'm getting at folks is that if you wanted to set up a custom, if you had a custom field that it'd be, actually these are custom fields that I've set up. So contact submission URL. So I'm actually going to, I'm just trying to think now folks, if I want to put in an extra field, if I want to, I need to go back to, and I'm going to actually, this is some of the advanced stuff now, but just to show you what's popular or possible with this, I mean, hidden field, okay? So I've actually put in a hidden field there and I need to, hidden field there, and the name attribute is hidden. So that has to be, and so contact submission URL, so the key, is there so if I change that key to that I'm just trying to think now folks I'm doing this pretty quickly I hope um name attribute or the default value will be what's it called a contact submission URL so we want the embedded URL I think it is so I think that's it folks, but we'll soon find out. Um, so we need to go back to pages. I need to, on my form, wanna go back to pages, uh, add new. Put this submission form now on Art to Spoon. Just call this testing form, and we should have a fluent form. Gutenberg block here. Select a form, send in data to funnel and click. Publish there. View the page. So just to verify, we're on or to spoon now. We're on that URL. Here's our form, email, testing at google.com, subscribe, we'll get our success message there and go back to funnel and click. I want to go into my contacts, <clears throat> testing, there it is. Testing at Google, and I just want to filter by the tag. What did we call it? Art to Spoon. Testing at Google, and we can see our contact is there. Just to get rid of that tag, go to the list, um, Art to Spoon subscribers, and we can see that testing at Google is there. It should be, you can see the list is there, the tag is there, um, Oh, the first name and last name didn't come up. The fields mustn't be connected right. But you can see the contact submission URL testing form that the, the URL came up. So I mustn't actually, <clears throat> the first name and last name didn't come up correctly. So there's something, there's something not connected there correctly. When I go down to first name, last name, and go over to the form, and we need to go down to 
advanced. Oh, that's why. Because the the attribute here, see the field name attributes, which is used to submit form data, and it, it must be the same and everything. And that's why, because this is actually one block. So what I actually need to do here to correct that is I need to go back to general fields. I need to go to name fields. No, I need them. Do, 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 do. I need them singular. So simple text. I thought I actually I was looking at this before, folks, and I was pretty sure there was a feature. Oh, yeah, that first name, last name, there was a first name. There was a way there somewhere to lay that out differently. Maybe I'm just not seeing it on this small screen, but the names, you see, they have it as names there. So I need to move quickly with this, but um, first name, I'm just, I'm limited to 15 minutes on this screencast software. I'm using the free version of screencast nomadic. So I have to be very quick here with this folks. Um, back to the form. So if I change that field, save there now, and I need to send the form again because the field connection wasn't right. That should be it. That's just a pop up feature I have there. I was testing something there, but. Oh, sugar, I've moved the order of my form around. Hopefully that doesn't matter, but we'll just go John, M-E-R-P-H-Y, just to see, just checking that Ireland at google.com. It's actually good to make a mistake, folks, because it will probably happen to other people that that connection with the fields is not working. So it actually, I've actually explained where the, connections can go wrong and delved a little bit into the custom fields as well so contacts there we go aaron.com and the name field still didn't work okay folks i had to pause the video there and just diagnose that little connection problem but i got the information working what i had to change was i just used for the fields coming in for prefix for Mr. Mrs. etc. and the first name and the last name, what I was using was the name fields, first name, last name, like that in Fluent Forms Pro. And for some reason, Fluent CRM didn't like that connection with those names for some reason. So all I have done is I've used three individual little simple text boxes instead. And when you go down to the bottom to the advanced settings, I've put in prefix there and this matches the names over here. So we're mapping, we're connecting the fields, first name, last name. So each of these boxes is connected to that value. Okay, like that. So first name there and then. And so just very, very quickly, we can test this and we can go I'll just go, oh sugar, not in the box, Sonny, and first name, Barry, M-E-R-P-H-I, B-M at google.com, submit, and we have success message there, and when we go back to our contacts now, in the other site, the receiving site, funnel and click BM at Google is there and Barry Murphy, we can see the details are there. So you go on and on connecting all the fields that you want, folks. So that's the basics of it. There's a lot, lot more to it. And I hope that helps you out with this and gets you going on it. So thanks very much. Good day from Ireland and haven't done a video in ages. So nice to be back doing something productive. Thanks very much. Bye for now.